Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 5 of my Isotope Ozone 7 series. In this video, we're going to use the Vintage Tape module on a few sources. This module is pretty simple and almost doesn't really need a tutorial per se, but I'll go over what each of the six controls does and explain how it affects the tone. And the effect that you get from this module is pretty subtle, but despite that, it's actually one of my favorite modules in the Ozone plugin. I'll also mention that this module is only available in the advanced version of Ozone, not the standard version. So the Vintage Tape module gives saturation and harmonic distortion characteristics of magnetic tape. And this module is specifically inspired by the Studer A810 two-track tape deck. Tape saturation is non-linear at higher levels, so the input drive option is an input gain that adjusts the level of the signal before the tape saturation. Lower gain will result in less saturation, and higher gain results in more saturation. Very high signals will result in audible distortion. At least for mixing and mastering, you typically don't want to audibly distort, but rather add a small amount of harmonic distortion and saturation that helps give the signal a nice lift. Tape bias, or AC bias, is an extremely high frequency signal that's imposed on the tape signal, around 100 kHz in this particular module. You don't hear the AC bias, because it's way higher than human hearing, but you do hear the effect that it has on the recording. In the early days of tape recording back in the 1930s, early tape recordings lacked high end and detail. Adding the AC bias to the signal helped bring out the high end, and also affects the shape of the distortion curve so it effectively helps control the tone of the saturation and harmonic distortion. A negative bias causes more high-frequency emphasis, but also increases the amount of high-frequency distortion. A positive bias results in less high-frequency emphasis, but a stronger low-end signal. However, extreme positive bias or over-biasing signals can lack dynamics. So I usually roll this slider up a bit for recordings that tend to lack bass, and I'll keep it at zero or slightly in the negative if the song is lacking high-end harmonics. The tape speed refers to the number of inches per second that the tape turns, and effectively the frequency response, and the frequency response of the harmonic distortion. 30 IPS will be brighter, and 15 IPS will be warmer. Normally I keep this on 30 IPS most of the time, but I find that if I have a mix that's very thin, bright, and brittle, the 15 IPS option works nicely. The effect you'll hear from the harmonics slider is very subtle. Tape saturation usually results in distortion with odd harmonics. Boosting the harmonics slider adds even order harmonics into the tape distortion. I can really only hear this a little when I have the bias and drive at an extreme level. I usually just pull it up a little bit. Lastly, let's talk about the low and high emphasis. Tape machines, much like digital audio sample rates, don't have an infinite frequency range of recording. Tape machines roll off on the low end and roll off on the high end. Pulling up the low emphasis increases a resonant peak at the roll off, which adds bass heavy material. The high emphasis is used to add high frequency material to compensate for the high frequency roll off. So I'll play back the track and dial in a setting I like. I'm just looking for a nice bump in richness and warming of the tone, not a drastic change.
So that sounds good. I had to dial down the bass a touch in the vintage EQ though to make room for the positive bias in the vintage tape. Overall, it's only a small improvement in tone, but it's also a little more silky sounding and less harsh sounding. This is why I love this module so much. It's a tiny change, but a necessary one for me for mastering. I also love putting vintage tape on drums. If you've got a drum recording that's sounding a little thin, using some drive and positive bias can really help give it some meat. If your snare doesn't have enough crack to it, you can put this right on the snare track and really pull up the input drive and pull down the bias. I'm gonna do that here, except I'll keep it right here on the drum bus. I'll go with a negative bias and increase the high end emphasis to pull out the cymbals and snare a bit. One last thing I use the vintage tape on a lot is vocals, believe it or not. I actually use it a lot on my own voice because when I sing in my higher range, I get kind of nasally and shrieky sounding. Christine, the singer for this song, has the same problem. If you use a positive bias and go with a 15 IPS tape speed, it helps to tame down the shriekiness in some vocals. Again, a subtle effect, but it's worth it. Want you to love me like you never did. Want you to love me like you never quit. Want you to love me like you never loved. You've never loved before. Want you to love me like you never did. Want you to love me like you never quit. Want you to love me like you never loved before. A lot of the clients I do mixing for, they record their own songs in their own home studio on cheaper mics, even if they're condenser mics, they're often cheaper condenser mics, with digital preamps that are right on their audio interface. I find that the vintage tape really helps to pull out the nasty high mid-range harmonic distortion that a lot of these recordings tend to have. All right, so that's the vintage tape plugin. If you'd like to work along with me, or even if you'd just like some more multi-track material to practice mixing and mastering with, this multi-track session is available for purchase and download. I'll leave a link in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Yeah.